It's that time again, between 1 or 2 a.m., which for me has always been, since the beginning, um, one of the most potent times for spiritual and occult activities and practice and work. Um, as I've been on a roll with my mini series on astral encounters, I thought I'd um, keep on with it. Um, we've already been through such figures as Hillary Clinton, Putin, Queen Elizabeth, Prince and Princess of Wales, Theresa May, Jeremy Corbyn, Paul Foster Case, and Nicholas Gears. And I can add to that group a very brief encounter with Boris Johnson. And the only thing I can say about that encounter with Boris was that he was amiable, flighty, and quite lightweight. And perhaps, as he appears to me generally, maybe what you see really is what you get <laughs> with Boris. I've also had one that I started to tell this story last night before I did Putin, but I, it, I, I found myself unable to to relate it properly, which because perhaps because it was somewhat different to these others in that it was uh, historical. Um, it was historical, and actually it related to Genghis Khan, believe it or not. Um, not quite the same for being historical, so I think I'll set that aside for another time and move instead to an experience which is, although along the similar lines in that it involved an encounter with a very public, famous individual, this was not in any way... Uh, this. There's different levels of consciousness, as as we all know. Within the dream state itself, there are many different states of consciousness. Um, you know, dreams can range from, you know, just order of the day, you know, sorted through the subconscious or the unconscious, worries, concerns, stresses and fears, things that have been on your mind. Um, you know, regular dreams, I put them. Um, or nightmares, but they can also become more and more lucid and more and more valuable as spiritual and psychic experiences. And the situations that I've relate, related in the course of this series have been kind of, <clears throat> I suppose, fairly middling a case significant perhaps to me personally, but not necessarily in the realm of my most lucid astral experiences or what you could call remote viewing, you know, because an astral projection is not the same as a dream. When you leave your body, this is not the same as a dream. And it's in it's very difficult to describe this unless you've experienced it. And also within the astral state, there are different levels. There's a kind of grey zone where you can wander the earth almost like a ghost. Um, and upper astral levels, which where you need to be guided, you can't simply go there. There, there, there are kind of, there are passwords, there are things that you need to, okay, there's, there's many, there are many different levels. And, Broadly speaking, most of the experiences I've described so far have kind of fallen into one sort of general zone of being, you know, not an, or not an ordinary dream or an ordinary lucid dream, 
but not an out of body full astral projection either. As to the relative value of lucid dreams over astral projections, that's also debatable. Most spiritual teachers would really tell you that actually lucid dreams are the more valuable, certainly the safer option, because dreaming is natural to us all, and it's a it's a natural state, and it's a safe place to be. It's dreaming. Astral projection is something else. It's, it's not necessarily being encouraged. It can be involuntary um, or conscious, but anyway, all those things aside, because that's not really what I intended to get into. I just wanted to really make the point that there are these multiple levels of consciousness, which is why I sort of try try to add in um, qualifiers before describing certain things. But this this next one that I'm about to describe was more of a real remote view which again isn't quite like an astral projection where your whole subtle body, your whole soul leaves your body. Remote view is more like your mind detaching. And this one was somewhere in between and and it was Pope John Paul II. Quite soon before he died, um, he was very, well, he was very, very old. Now, I was absolutely devoted to John Paul II. I, I still think he, he was the most incredible. I, I think Christian leader. If you look back at um, sort of old footage of John Paul II and his visits around the world, and just the the magnitude of the spiritual aura that that man had was was just immense his universality um, I know this is contentious because there are <laughs> Catholics who didn't agree with him um, also people who are you know, very upset about what was exposed about the Catholic Church at that time um, I'm just all I'm saying is that I personally was absolutely devoted to him nonetheless I, I'm not a Catholic by the way I'm, I'm a Christian but I'm not baptized Catholic um, I was still nonetheless traumatised by the revelations about the Catholic Church and the abuses. I certainly didn't ignore it um, or sweep it under the carpet. This this absolutely traumatised me and brought me to a spiritual crisis of the most profound kind, which lasted for years as I tried to process everything that was that was going on and I was hearing and trying to work through it and, and sort of make sense of my faith in relation to it. Now as it became clear that the Pope was going to die, the intensity of my thoughts around this and the questions that I had basically led me um, to seek him out, to go to him in my mind and in my astral form. Now, I wouldn't say that I quite did this consciously in the sense that I didn't lie down that night and think, right, I'm going to go and knock on the Pope's door. But there was an intensity astral protection requires an absolutely intense amount of energy. Um, and I had built up an enormous intensity of energy around this, these questions that I had for the Pope related to the terrible headlines that they were and the, the things that were being exposed at that time. Also, at this time in my life, I, I was doing um, a lot. This was probably at the height of my meditative practice and my ability to leave my body which, like I say, does require a lot of energy. I'm, I'm older now. I don't have quite the same desire body as I did then in my youth. Um, for me, that was um, connected with this ability. 
especially to leave my body. You, you have to want to do that. <clears throat> and anyway, all this 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 culminated in me <clears throat> knocking on the Pope's door. And I'll sort of start now with the description of the experience itself. I became conscious and I was really myself. With another person, I don't know who it was though. We were stood together and we went to the door of the Pope, his private rooms in the Vatican somehow and we knew where that was. Perhaps the person that I was with knew and they were the one, ones who'd heard my inner question or prayers and um, had taken me there. He came out and even though I couldn't hear words spoken either by me, the other person or the Pope, the gist of what was said was known to me. He, of course, looked incredibly old, you know, you know, as if you remember how he looked when he was terribly ill in his, in his final years, final year, months. Um, so he looked incredibly old, and, and my question for him was, you know, along the lines of, what about all this? This, this this news, this this stuff that's been coming out and he wasn't obviously happy at the question but what was conveyed to me was that he didn't know. Now people will cry, of course he knew. Um, and so let me, I will explain this, but let me first just finish what Hamdi said. He didn't know, and then he opened up a door that was in front of us, invited us to step inside the office um, to look at the view from his rooms in the Vatican. Um, and all I, all I can really recall properly in terms of details about that was that it was a room with three windows, curved windows, um, long, wide windows, and it covered the whole of sort of one side of the room, it seemed. Perhaps it was a tower. And, and they looked out onto an incredibly beautiful view, which absorbed the whole of my attention. And after that view got my attention, the experience ended. Now perhaps that view was to distract me from my question, or perhaps that view was his answer given in the form of metaphor because this is a subtle realm and you have to be alert for information comes in myriad ways. It's not necessarily spoken because hearing something in normal language is almost the last thing that happens. Information comes in many different ways. It's telepathically conveyed. And certainly images and symbols are, are, are primary forms of communication as well. Now, what I thought to myself, both before and after actually this encounter, which for any mind I thought about it for years, <laughs> deeply, um, inside out, and also researched it a lot as well. Um, so while they did know, in the sense of being told, there was a limit to the understanding, I think, a, li a limit of, of understanding in the, the person of the Pope.
in the sense of I think a, a very a holy person like this does not perhaps see things in the same way as the the kind of an evil person sees them. I'm not trying to make excuses. I, I it's hard to express what I mean, but what I will say is, when he died. I was I was bereft and was went into a very deep meditation and I was able to whilst awake spiritually um connect and be unified and kind of astrally present at part of his funeral where they, they were singing um there was an angelic an invocation of um, of angels and a reaching out of prayers for his soul, um, which I was able to participate in. Um, my thoughts and questions around this didn't end with his death, and I did have a very, very distinct sense that after his death, he went, he agreed to go down into hell, the underworld, to bring out any injured souls or of victims who'd been pushed into a place they shouldn't have been and would both do penance on behalf of those who'd done it but also to help lead out any souls that were trapped. which I, I know all that is is pretty heavy and pretty intense and you know people have their own thoughts about this which you know I completely respect I'm just sharing my own <laughs> thoughts and feelings on it I do think his beatification and subsequent sainthood were justified and um I do love him. Nevertheless, there are great problems in the Catholic Church, which, as Valentin Tomberg points out, has an egregore. All institutions and all great, uh, all, all organizations, that they could be political, religious, societal, they have an egregore. Even advertising is an egregore. So there is an egregore of all the world religions and the Catholic Church is no exception. And I think what Tom Berg, with his wonderful light touch, you know, cautioned us was we must not mistake the egregore of, of the church for the church itself. There is still a holy of holies, even if the egregore becomes monstrous. We also witness it in Islam. Um, all the religions have a have an egregore, which are more or less terrible. Just as political systems do, some political systems become nothing but an egregore if they're really truly evil, like Nazism or or, or communism in its you know original political form, at least. So you know, but we mustn't mistake in in with religions that. We must mistake the thing itself, the egregore, i.e. we must not throw the baby out with the bath water. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about John Paul II, who <laughs> bizarrely is twinned with Boris Johnson in, in this reading. Um, the most... fascinating experience in this series is one that I've al already related and that's about Obama um, and I think one of my first readings might have been about Obama and the incredible detailed full-on astral vortex that I went through 
a couple of days before his inauguration, which I think was, was it 2009? And, uh, you know, which was an experience so, you know, momentous for me in my life. So it's just, I've relayed the story many, many, many times, both to friends and um, in writing. So um, it's a while since I've done it and I will have to summon up some reserves to go through it again, purely because I've repeated it so much. And I'm sure I've done a reading about it on this channel somewhere. But my earlier readings were really quiet. So um, I'll do it again, but not tonight because it's a long one. Um, so I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you for listening.